Okay, fellas, come on, come on. Right, look, this should be a tie that we're winning over two legs. We're way better than Vanuatu. But just taking the occasion, okay? 2010 was the last time we were at a World Cup. By the time the next World Cup comes around, it would have been 16 years. Far too long. It's been way too long since we've been at a World Cup with New Zealand, okay? So make the most of it over two legs, enjoy Luganville, get back and celebrate at Eden Park. After that, we can go on a bus trip to end all bus trips in terms of getting on the booze, okay? Just make sure you get the job done, you should. No continental playoff, straight to the group stages of the World Cup. Okay? Come on, fellas. There's a party in the streets and the city's on fire. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 23 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with A of Silkland. Come today, we're going to play one game with each of those teams. That's the plan. Anyway, first up, we're going to play the first leg of our World Cup qualifying final in Oceania as we take on Vanuatu. Over in the Islands bus trip before that one, hopefully can pick up a good win over those guys to make sure the second leg at Eden Park can just show you guys some highlights from. And off the back of that, we'll then take on Melbourne City with AFC Auckland looking to continue the good form that we started to pick up during the course of yesterday's episode. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but haven't gone forward too far off the back of that second game yesterday's episode as i said it was focused on afc auckland we took on the brisbane roar and Adelaide United and also a couple of transfers as well before we got stuck in to those two games so if you missed that one i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner during the course of that episode also select our squad for the finals of these World Cup qualifiers that we are about to play in Oceania where we take on Vanuatu which surprisingly is one of the few teams that we haven't actually taken on so far in the save we've taken on most of the teams from Oceania Vanuatu are not one of them but we are a team currently ranked up if we ever look at our nation in 92nd on the world rankings have just slipped down while we've been taking on Oceania teams in the past couple of windows from our previous high of 89th but Vanuatu if we go back and have a look at where they are ranked they are all the way down once the game actually decides to load it up and 157th this is a tie that we should be winning only got a couple of injuries going into this world cup qualifying final as mentioned during the course of yesterday's episode and to be fair only one is influencing our usual first choice 11 that's Tyler Binden being out with an injury our usual first choice center back so apart from that we'll be at full strength but seeing as this is quite a big game and it's away from home, we get away from Australia for once, fought before we get stuck into the first league of hopefully booking our ticket to the FIFA World Cup in 2026. Before then, we're going to do a bus trip over in Vanuatu. So for a couple of days in Vanuatu, first off, we do need a place to stay. And this was the highest rated place on Google, the Barrier Beach Resort. If we have a look at some of the gallery, you'll see why it's got quite a nice rating right next to a beach. There we can see the photos. Hopefully we can scan through these because to be fair, I should have done more research on this. Don't know if Vanuatu has 360 view because it's in the islands. But there you can see where the boards will be staying before this big World Cup qualifier. Hopefully you can get the job done here well enough to make sure that the game at Eden Park doesn't matter too much. But there you can see very relaxing atmosphere for us here right next to the beach. A couple of swimming zones. It's all very tropical, all very relaxing. To be fair, it is a wee way away from the stadium itself. About a 12 minute drive, 10 k's away, but that might not be the worst thing. Get out of the actual town part of Luganville itself, if you can call it that being Luganville in Vanuatu, but this does look like a decent setup. Just rent out the entire place for the All Whites for a couple of nights. There's even a turtle. Might be a frozen one though, not a real one by the look of it. Also got paddle boarding that we can do. Lots of relaxing activities. Just a nice chilled out time before we go and fresh the home team hopefully and book our ticket to the FIFA World Cup in 2026. But there's our accommodation, which is the Barrier Beach Resort. Going off that page, here is the journey that we're going to take. 12 minutes, about 10 kilometers. But I don't think we've got street view. So I'll see what I can bring up here in terms of images on the way. We'll see if we go past some interesting stuff or can see what the backcountry roads in Vanuatu look like. 
but we'll try and find some stuff to look at on our way to the Luganville Soccer Stadium. And indeed we've got no street view for today's bus trips, it's going to be a bit of a different one having to zoom in on the actual overhead image here of the island of Vanuatu, but somehow I've got to start off by getting from the Barrier Beach Resort itself onto the road, which thankfully does look like it's somewhat tarmacked, just not too sure exactly how you do that, looks like a dotted line there, don't think that's too suitable for the bus to go over. Might have to use the back roads there, go along there towards the Zafrolli's Beach House and then up on that road before we join up with the road itself. But there you can see lots of greenery on our way to the stadium here as we make our way past some other accommodation near where we're staying here in the island of Vanuatu. Next up, we go down the road a little bit more and see the first thing that might be of interest on our way to the ground, the Vanuatu Agricultural Research and Technical Centre, where I imagine all the young farmers in Vanuatu learn stuff. So that's that area there, the first thing that looks kind of interesting there in Vanuatu, because so far, lots of green stuff, but you expect that over in the islands. Going down a bit more, the colours change a little bit, a bit more ocean feeling, and we start to get a better view of the sea yet again after leaving our nice little place that we're staying there. On the island going down here past the jetty, which is a bit closer accommodation, but mustn't be as high rated because that didn't come up when I searched for a good hotel near the soccer stadium here in Luganville. And before you have a go at me for calling it that, that's what you have to search it as on Google. So I kind of have to call it that, otherwise going to get too confused. But going down the road here, you continue to make your way past a lot of greenery and we eventually go past something called Alec Bethel Riverside. So it looks like here we might be going past a little tiny river, albeit quite hard to tell with the image that we are working with. Going down we take a little bit of a left hand turn here, going alongside the ocean and the coastline. Then we go inland a little bit more and we go past what looks like a bit of farming area and some more green stuff. Keep going down, then we take a right and go past more green stuff to be fair. Lots of green stuff here. It looks like that area looks a bit drier than the rest, but nonetheless, we go past more trees. Lots and lots of trees. Does look like though that the road is still tarmac, so that's quite nice. We go down, take a bit of a left-hand turn here. Interestingly drawn with the Google Maps. We go past the cemetery, which is a little bit creepy because cemeteries are always creepy. But it's a cemetery, looks pretty solid that one. We go down a bit further, go past the Agricultural College Farm. So lots of farming stuff here on our journey to the Luganville Soccer Stadium. Starting to get near a couple of houses and now the Agricultural College, another farming area. Vanuatu in farming might be quite similar to New Zealand in farming, but going down a bit further, now we start to get past some actual shops, the likes of Parallel Records, what comes up with that, in fact it's a recording studio, some of the guys can go in there, do a rap, unfortunately haven't picked Joey Champness for this tour, because of course he's a player who used to be a DJ as well, and do a bit of interesting stuff when he was over at the Newcastle Jets, I believe it was, we go past the cocktail bar, in Summer Louis, that could be quite useful after the game, albeit no pictures, so can't check that one out. We go past something called Paradise Views again, not really too sure what that is. In fact, it's an apartment building, you wouldn't know it, but that must be the state of Vanuatu Apartments. And we start to make our way now in towards the big city itself of Luganville. We go past more of a residential area. Just looking and seeing if anything interesting is going to pop up at all. We go past, I saw it briefly, a carver bar. That might be lots of fun after the game if we pick up a good enough result to make sure the boys can get on the source. Then we take a right hand turn and we are here at the Luganville Soccer Stadium and we'll try and get some better pictures of it than what we can see here from this aerial view. And time to look at the ground itself through some images that I'm hoping to find on websites here seeing there's no 360 view over in Vanuatu, but there you can see one in an article that was around the OFC Champions League last year. So obviously this is a ground that does often host things for OFC, including the first league of this World Cup qualifying final, but you can see the stadium, further athletics track around it, then the field in the middle, so thankfully a little bit of a gap there in between the crowd and the field, because sometimes the island crowds can get just a little bit rowdy, but decent actual looking capacity for Vanuatu there, with the area next to the stand where quite a few people 
uh, there in general admissions. It does look like we might get a decent crowd here for an international you would like to think. We'll go back now and just have a look at the pictures that we can also pick up here on Google. Interesting to see this is the picture that was chosen by the Luganville Soccer Stadium Facebook page because that doesn't look very good. It looks kind of rotten grass type thing there. Not too sure how to describe that, but this is the Wikipedia picture, which is from the inside of that athletics track. There might be some of the football grounds in around that big one that we are playing at, as you saw before. But to be fair, not too sure how good this bus trip was considering didn't have much to work with in terms of street view this time. But there's our bus trip to the Luganville Soccer Stadium. And hopefully we can wrap it up in one leg. Our ticket to the FIFA World Cup in 2026. And here are the team sheets for the first leg of this World Cup qualifying final from Oceania. There are Vanuatu going with a 4-2-3-1, the big name in that team. Brian Caltech, formerly of the Central Coast Mariners, these days a free agent. We're going with our best 11 available. That does mean that Lucas Kelly Hill from the Phoenix does come in at centre back for Tyler Bindham, but apart from that, full strength. So hopefully we get the job done in this first leg, then can rotate a bit more at Eden Park. To be fair, might do to anyway with quite a few players on yellow cards, but early highlight here, Vanuatu in the yellow, do win the ball off us, obviously being the all-whites. We are in all-white, but Nico Kerwin now makes his way down that right-hand side, floats that one into the mixer. For Callum McCowan, unfortunately, that one just goes over the crossbar. Early chance for us there from a header, but it's still nil. All no doubt that's something we'll look to exploit today with the likes of Chris Wood up front, hopefully can perform off the back of a decent episode yesterday. Off the back of struggling in his first couple of games since coming to AFC Auckland, but Clark now on the ball for Vanuatu, a highlight shortly off the back of that first one. We saw Kerwin there with a physical challenge. You'll notice that in these Oceania games, as I mentioned back when we did the OFC Nations Cup episode, there can be some quite physical challenges in these Oceania national games, and also quite a few penalties can get blown as well, but thankfully that one was allowed to go on, and we can hold the ball here for a little while. Joe Bell pings that one out to Nico Kerwin, starts to cut inside, makes his way inside the box, gets brought down, and it's given us a penalty, just as we talk about the physicality, that one was a little bit too fast, Sarpreet Singh's been really good for us so far, in the national team from penalties, and from general play, but as I say that, that is a pretty awful penalty, goes straight down the middle, and the Vanuatu goalkeeper can make a decent save, so they keep it at nil all early, we'll see if we can do anything from the subsequent corner, but hopefully that's not a sign of things to come, kind of like that Central Coast game that I played going in to yesterday's episode, but unfortunately, chance from the spot, we miss it, and it's still nil all. And just past the 10 minute mark now, and there is a goal kick here to Vanuatu, they take it short of Brian Caltag, he plays that one across the face of goal to Clark, and it goes back to the goalkeeper, who now probably is on quite a good rating off the back of that penalty save off the effort from Sarpreet Singh, but eventually they pump that one deep. Kelly Hill comes up nicely and heads it down to Joe Bell. Now some good passing his stomach to Wood. He'll offload this to Callum McCowart. That's a wonderful first time strike with his right foot. And Callum McCowart scores the opening goal of this World Cup qualifying final for Oceania. And we take a 1-0 lead. That's a nice effort from outside the box. Nice curving one as well. A very well placed finish to give us a 1-0 lead. Thankfully, we get our goal eventually off the back of that previous penalty save. Sarpreet Singh goes down, which is a slight concern, but we make it 1-0. Albeit not too long off the back of that opening goal. We have just noticed here that Callum McCow has picked up an orange injury off the back of scoring that goal. So off the back of this highlight, we'll see how he's going. Might bring on Ben Old in this one. He can come on for his first cap under my management, but still on the attack here, McCowart squares it for Singh. A little bit iffy there inside the box for Vanuatu, but eventually Chris Wood got a shot off. It got blocked, and eventually Vanuatu will clear that for a corner, but hopefully we can be quite dangerous from these with the likes of Chris Wood, who can hopefully grab a headed goal. We go far post looking for him, but unfortunately that one's headed away. I think that was from Kalapalu. Now Garbutt, who's been pretty good for us so far with the national team as well. Joe Bell will try a shot from outside the box. It gets blocked, nothing doing. And off the back of that, we might just play things safe here with Callum McCowart. Hopefully not too serious an injury. So coming on for him will be Ben Old. We're forced into an early substitution, but we're still 1-0 in front. And shortly for back of that first substitution, a highlight does start here with Vanuatu on the ball, trying to make their way into our half. It'll be interesting to see what they offer here in front of their home fans. 
not too much so far. That's a poor pass there. Kache can head that down to the fresh legs of Ben Old Squares. That one for Chris Wood. Instant impact from our left winger off of the bench. The Wellington Phoenix man will link up with the new AFC Auckland man. He will score a goal to make it 2-0. And hopefully we can really kick on from here and make sure that we're in a very strong position going to that second leg at Eden Park. To be fair, should be winning that anyway no matter what team we put out, but off to a good start in this one. 2-0, halfway through the first half. And just making your way into injury time here of this first half, nothing stepping off the back of that second goal, albeit as I say that, now a free kick in our favour, and Stamanek will control that inside the box. Takes on a shot, which Chris Wood absolutely poaches there off of Stamanek. To be fair, not too sure if that was making its way into the back of the net, but Chris Wood makes sure of it, and thankfully we do grab one more goal before half time to make it 3 0. Stamanek will grab the assist, but Chris Wood there just makes sure that we do score a goal. He'll pick up a double just before half time to make it 3 0. Vanuatu have done nothing so far in this game, and to be fair, scoring three goals with that XG off the back of an early penalty, not too bad an effort. Complete domination so far, hopefully, it will continue. In the second half, we will take off Sarpreet Singh on a poor rating, probably off the back of that penalty miss. Ryan Thomas, he can come on in his place, but very happy with how this is going so far. Hopefully, a few more goals in the second half just to wrap this one up and book our ticket to the World Cup as we hold a 3-0 lead over Vanuatu. And a little bit surprisingly, just going past the hour mark in this game now, there's been no highlights so far in the second half which is a little bit worrying, albeit with a 3-0 lead, it's not too bad, but stamina has gone down to a red hack. Clayton Lewis is the backup DLP. He can come on for him, can the man from the MacArthur Bulls. And also while we're here, we might switch to an attacking mentality to hopefully grab some more goals and extend this 3-0 lead. And just making our way to the last 20 minutes of this game, the second half so far has been actually pretty disappointing from us, not up to too much, but Joe Bell and Nico Kerwin down to Red Hearts, our last stoppage and two substitutions left of so the engraver's nightmare. Him and Chambers Borgness can come on for Joe Bell and also Tim Payne for Nico Kerwin. That's our last sub. We'll also chuck our wingbacks on to attack just to try and get a bit more going, grab a fourth goal at least to make sure that it should be all wrapped up by the time we get to Eden Park, but still doing a pretty good job with a 3-0 lead. And just inside the last five minutes of this game, and finally get a highlight here in the second half. It does come off the back of me switching back to positive, because going attacking didn't seem to get us up to too much. The second half, though, has been a bit disappointing, considering how good we did look in the first half. Haven't been able to extend this 3-0 lead, but maybe we get a chance to here right before full time. But to be fair, 3-0, probably a big enough buffer that we can skip over that second league at Eden Park. You wouldn't imagine Vanuadu will beat us by four goals in New Zealand, Manny Garbutt here starts to get on the attack, a tackle there from Valu, but thankfully we do keep the ball, Garbutt back to Tim Payne, now Borkness, he will find Libby Kakache, who tries a long range effort, but that one goes well over the bar, we'll still praise the guys, because 3-0 is a good scoreline, XG wise, it's about what's expected, but that obviously shows, haven't created too many good chances here in the second half, which as I said, is a bit disappointing, and now Vanuatu here actually get on the attack, with a decent chance here potentially for the first time in this game. Float that one far post. Thankfully, Tim Payne will head that one away. But a long range effort there does force a decent save out of Alex Paulson. Sabanuadu there are looking for a late goal to potentially keep themselves in this one and actually make me show that second leg from Eden Park. But thankfully, Alex Paulson, the AFC Auckland goalkeeper, does make a save. We somewhat deal with that danger. Thomas will boot that one clear to make sure Vanuatu get no more chances in this first leg of our World Cup qualifier. I'd like to think that 3-0 win should make sure we're going to make our way through to the World Cup for the first time in 16 years by the time we get there next year in game. But that was a pretty comfortable win. Certainly could have got more goals in the second half. But we're halfway there to a first World Cup under my management. And the save will come back shortly and show you guys the highlights or do a recap on that second leg back at Eden Park before we take on Melbourne City with AFC Auckland. And we come back having just picked up a 3-0 win over Vanuatu in the second leg as well at Eden Park. So it does mean we go through 6-0 on aggregate to the World Cup. And for some reason, we get a trophy for going to the World Cup. That's probably good because there's no chance we're going to win a trophy when we're actually at the World Cup next year. I'm pretty confident in saying that. No offense, guys, but... I think it's a little bit too soon for us so far 
in this save, but for some reason, we actually get a trophy for this, making our way through to the World Cup. Goals were scored from Ryan Thomas from the penalty spot. Also, Hammond Chambers Borkness actually scored a really good one before half time. Yet again, all three goals did come in the first half, and the other one that was picked up by Elijah Just, who actually came in his injury cover for Keller McCowett, who actually had quite a serious injury off the back of that first league. Also, Ryan Thomas went off early in this one, which if you're a New Zealand football fan and know of Ryan Thomas, is incredibly unsurprising. He is always injured. Hopefully, that one not too serious. Off the back of this, we can now get back into the friendly mode and try and get our ranking up a little bit more before we do get stuck in to our first World Cup here with the All Whites. We'll go on off the back of this, check the inbox. There's the confirmation. We are through to the World Cup in the USA, Canada, and Mexico in 2026 off the back of a 6-0 two-legged win over Vanuatu. And here are all the inbox items off the back of that. As you can see, quite a similar matchup to that first leg in terms of when the goals are scored, all of them in the first half. Yet again, XG and stats-wise, everything quite similar. Yet again, it was played at Eden Park. For some reason, it always comes up there for the picture as Sky Stadium. Ryan Thomas was injured. It was a hamstring, a torn hamstring. That does mean that he will be out just checking on this to see if he'll be available for our next window. No, he won't. Two to three months. He is incredibly injury prone. As you can see over there on the right hand side, all the pluses. That kind of sums up his career, unfortunately. But it does mean that we have qualified for the World Cups. So have done that nice and early. Does mean that Vanuatu, they will go to a continental playoff which will probably be incredibly tough for those guys, but still, you never know. They might have a chance. We make our way onto the Oceania role of honor now for managers off the back of having already done it in Australia for our work with AFC Auckland. Everyone's quite happy with us. We've made our way through to the World Cup. Everyone's optimistic for the future. The squad's reacted positively. And world ranking-wise, we've dropped down to 92nd. I'm pretty sure that happened before we played that first game in today's episode, but hopefully off the back of this, we can start to work our way back up those rankings with some friendlies before we do get stuck in to that World Cup campaign come the end of the season. But thankfully, job done, and we are going to make our way through to the FIFA World Cup in 2026 here with the All Whites. So a good comfortable start there to today's episode. We're off to the FIFA World Cup 2026 with the All Whites ending that 16-year drought at the big tournament here. For New Zealand, off the back of that now, we switch our attention mainly for the rest of the season to AFC Auckland. Next up, quite a big game for us here as we try and close the gap on the league leaders in the Western Sydney Wanderers as we take on Melbourne City from Mount Smart Stadium. These guys, our form so far in this save has been a bit mixed against. You can see we actually beat them twice last season. The loss did come in one of the A-League games before we defeated them in the Australian Cup final by a scoreline. Of two goals to nil, but this season they're certainly doing a lot better than last season, where they almost ended up in a relegation playoff. But this season, doing a lot better with Hiroshi Miyazawa in charge from the start. And also, they've got some really good wonder kids here at Melbourne City, as we pointed out off the back of signing Max Caputo going in to this new season. And two of them, the two down the bottom there, come into this one having just debuted for the Socceroos. James Caruso, we pointed him out in that episode a couple ago when we did see that he looked like a freakish striker. I said he was probably already ready for a Socceroos debut. Two caps now and one goal. He is going to be an absolute freak. So certainly someone to keep an eye out on in this upcoming game. And also just below that, the hot prospect is actually Josip Maratic, who also made his debut for the Socceroos in that same window. A very promising right back come left back. So this Melbourne City team has some very promising players. So despite the fact that we pinched Max Caputo off them, they will still be pretty strong going into this one and should be a good test for us here at Mount Smart Stadium. Because of that, unlike yesterday's episode, I'm going to go back to a positive mindset for this one and just see if we can do the job with that, but still sticking with that pressing forward on Chris Wood to see if he can continue some decent form from those last few games. He set out that second leg against Vanuatu while the Wayne train started up front, so he should be nice and fresh here for this clash with Melbourne City. But the only other change does come where Adam Mitchell will start at centre back instead of a suspended Jordan Courtney Perkins. But apart from that, we are at full strength and hopefully can pick up some points here at home. And as I said, close the gap on the league leaders in the Western Sydney Wanderers. 
And these are the team sheets for this AFC Auckland game. In today's episode, there's our one as we ran through before. Interest, of course, in Max Caputo playing for the first time against his former club. Also going off the plate today as Melbourne City, their light blue, does kind of clash with our blue and white hoops. But there's Melbourne City with the 4-4-2 and those young wonder kids alongside some pretty good established A-League players. It's a good team, but hopefully we can pick up some points, as I said, and get a bit closer to the top of the table. And it's taken until around about the halfway mark of the first half for the first highlight of this game. A corner here in our favour. Taylor Tamer will get on the end of it as it's clear. Now Debungo floats that far post for Kvernadze. Can't quite find it, but thankfully Adam Mitchell back in the team seeing as our new signing in Courtney Perkins has picked up a very early suspension. Controls it now. Ronald does slightly get in behind. Squeeze that one nicely for Kvernadze, but unfortunately the Melbourne City defence do cover that nicely, and now a tamer there with a good foul to break up the play, but that's the first highlight so far. As you can see, stats-wise, it's been a very quiet game, so it's still nil all. And it was such a quiet first half, in fact, that it looks like that's going to be the only highlight of it. As you can see, the stats are actually quite similar to what they were off the back of that blocked shot from Fernadze. Nil all with have more shots, but so far, none on target, which is a bit of an issue so far for us at AFC Auckland this season. Might need to go attacking at some point during the second half if that does continue. Also, a couple of players out there on poor ratings and yellow cards because they're going to make some subs here at halftime. Stefan Negro can come on for Callan Elliott on a 6.4. Also, we'll bring on Lucas Nunez for Adam Mitchell at centre back on that yellow card. We'll just see which player has the most pace because that's quite important for that stopper role instead of the defend role. Lucas Nunez more pace so he can play that role that Adam Mitchell was. Renault on a yellow card, but Kvernadze on a 6.4. So our last sub here at halftime will bring on Tormine in his role from last season as a left winger. Keep Renault out there, but make sure that he eases off tackles, but hopefully a bit more action in the second half as we're still locked up at nil all. And thankfully FM heard me at halftime because an early highlight here in the second half, albeit it is in favour potentially of Melbourne City, but good header away there from Renault. And Gabriel Tormine will actually win that one for us down our right-hand side, but then a loose touch, which Henderson Hall can control. Now, one of the young promising wonder kids there in Maratic plays that forward for Esposito. He pumps it deep. Thankfully, Debungo can control that for us and a chance here for us to play out from the back, hopefully get on the score sheet first, albeit really poor pass that from Pascali. And now a chance here for Henderson Hall, who does get in behind. Jamie McLaren will pick up the assist. And Sebastian Pascali, who of course last season was our best player here based on the end of season awards. That's a shocking pass. And off the back of half time, we just look really stuttery here early this season at AFC Auckland. That doesn't help. A gift there from Pascali. Henderson Hall tucks it away to give City a 1 0 lead. And very short off the back of that opening goal, it's a free kick here in our favour. We take it short in a very similar position to where Pascali did give the ball away before this time a tamer on the ball Pascali thankfully this time does actually find a teammate but so far City are putting us under pressure and so far we are still yet to have a single shot on target which obviously makes winning games of football a bit difficult but there's the former City man in Caputo on the ball but does lose out there to a player who is on loan from Man City there at right back for Melbourne in this game but thankfully we win the ball eventually off him and now Chris Wood with some good hold up player tamer Nice ball over the top there for Ronaldo. Was he onside? Not too sure. Chris Wood, big chance in an open net. And it was onside. That's an absolute gift there, which Chris Wood has missed. And as we start to make our way towards the hour mark, if he doesn't do something shortly off the back of a miss like that, I think we can take him off for the Wayne train. We'll do that, Chris Wood. That's an absolute shocker. The Wayne train can come on as we're still somehow 1-0 behind. And we may as well go attacking while we're here. And short off the back of that sub of Chris Wood off the back of that shocking miss before it. Now it's a free kick here, which Lucas Nunez does get his head on the end of. But unfortunately, that one goes just over the bar. The theme of the game so far for us, albeit according to the stats, we've actually had two shots on target. But now it's time for us to make our final sub. Debungo or Caputo. I think we'll take off Caputo against this former team. See if Stefan Melk can help us and also chuck our wingbacks onto attack. Plus go a bit wider in terms of our whip as well and just try and do some different stuff to turn around this 1-0 deficit. And just about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this game, we are still 1-0 behind and now it's time for us to go a bit more up-tempo and just see if that helps out as well as distributing to the fullbacks. Also, we will chuck Taylor Tamer as a defensive midfielder 
on two support and steel defend. Actually, interesting to see he's a bit better suited to that based on his star rating. And right off the back of those changes, there is a corner here in our favour. Victor Ross, that goes back to Tormin for some reason. Back out to Debungo. Back to Nunez. Decent shot from him, the centre back. But unfortunately, yet again, we can't hit the target from a highlight that we see XG wise. Certainly being the better team in this game, but still 1 0 behind. We'll be at a corner here, and Victor Ross will get his head on the end of that one, much like against Melbourne Victory in that semi final in the Australian Cup last season, late on this time. It might be enough for us to get back in this game and maybe escape with three points, but to be fair, a point, the way this game has gone, wouldn't be too bad against a decent City team, but thankfully, we come up trounce with set PCFC late, and make it one all, as we make our way into the last couple of minutes of this game, we will stay attacking, just to see if we can continue the momentum from that goal, but unfortunately, doesn't look like it will be the case, some more drop points for us here at AFC Auckland, which is a little bit concerning, but Melbourne City are quite a good team this season with some very good wonder kids, as you saw before. Not too worried about dropping points, but maybe need to go back to what we were doing last season in terms of the pressing forward instead of the advance for Chris Wood. We could have won that game if he put that chance away in an open net in the second half, but unfortunately put it over the bar. That kind of summed up our day. Just no good chances for us until that corner, which thankfully we put away through Victor Ross, and we dropped some points at home. A one-all draw against Melbourne City. So we continue to struggle early doors here in our title defence at AFC Auckland in the third season of this save in the A-League. One all there against Melbourne City, a late corner, which Victor Ross thankfully put away to make sure we grab something from that game at Mount Smart. It does mean we've dropped down the table just a little bit to fifth below Melbourne City because they're above us on goal differential. Also, McCaffrey FC have jumped above us on 12 points into third spot these days. Sydney FC actually on top of the table as the Western Sydney Wanderers. They drew with the Brisbane Roar while Sydney FC picked up a 3-1 win at Avondale. And on the Sunday, the Wellington Phoenix, they drew with the Melbourne Victory. They've actually had a decent start to the season compared to what they've done in the previous two seasons of the save. They might be a bit more of a force this season than they have been in the past. That would be unsurprising as they've also had some quite good youth intakes in the first couple of seasons of the save. And I think going into our next couple of games, you might stick to that positive mentality, but also advance forward instead of a pressing forward. That's what's worked for us so far in the save with this tactic at AFC Auckland. We'll see if Chris Wood and the Wayne Train can do a decent job playing that role instead of the pressing forward that we use with them when they are on international duty. But that will do it for today's episode. We did book our ticket to the FIFA World Cup 2026 with a 6-0 two-league win over Vanuatu before getting back to Struggle Street with that one-all draw against City with AFC Auckland. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well from here. Going to focus the rest of the season on AFC Auckland until, of course, we get to the FIFA World Cup with the All Whites hopefully can defend our crown, our title, but so far in a little bit of trouble. Five points behind both Sydney FC and the Western Sydney Wanderers, albeit to be fair, in between now, and we will probably come back for the first episode of next week start to get into some more winnable fixtures, the likes of Brisbane City, Evandale, and Western United. Also, Sydney FC, top of the league. Might skip over that one, because I think we'll come back in late October and play our first New Zealand derby of the season against the Wellington Phoenix, as I said, this season. Got off to a better start than they have the last couple of years of the save. They might be a bit stronger with the likes of Adam White in their team this year. And then, off back of taking the Redcliffe waves off camera, we will come back and take on a team also up near the top of the table in the Western Sydney Wanderers. So I think that will be the plan for the start of next week, the Phoenix and the Wanderers. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.